Let us return to the question of what explains student performance. If we had a sample of students in one school, we could map their student performance on other independent variables. In this case, we're looking at SES. So we have here a scatter plot of student SES by student performance. We can see here that there is indeed a pretty clear positive relationship. However, what if we had another school? We could look at the same relationship comparing two schools. In this case, we have SES again by student performance. And again, we'll notice that there is indeed a clear positive relationship, but there does seem to be quite a bit of variation between the two schools. This poses a problem with estimation. Using a standard OLS, we're violating two of the major assumptions. The assumptions are that the errors are gonna be independent of the groups and that they're equally distributed. If we think here about what the regression line, line might look like, we will see a positive relationship, somewhat like this. However, if we looked in the two groups, it would look a little more like this. As we can see, there isn't a lot of independence um, around the regression line, and there does seem to be quite a lot of between group variation. And so it may lead us to believe not only uh, that these will violate the, the assumptions of OLS, but also that there might be something going on at level two, that there might be something inherently different about these schools that are affecting student performance. Unfortunately, with only two schools, the best we can do is to model them separately, uh, creating two separate regression lines, such as what's presented here. And with a larger random sample of school, we may want to model the differences between these two schools. For example, we may think that the reason that student performance in this green school is higher than in this red school is that it has a higher level of funding. This would be a level two variable, since all of the individuals in this school are gonna have the same value on school spending, and all of these individuals in this school are gonna have the same value on school spending as well. We can start to estimate the relationship between school funding and student performance. Here, since we're gonna be looking at averages across many schools, that's gonna be the predictor on the x-axis. Here, we can also see a positive relationship between funding and average school performance. But with this presentation, we're only looking at the level two relationship. We may, however, be interested in both of these relationships, the effect of student level SES, as well as school level funding on student outcomes and performance. We can do this through a simple multi-level model. The simplest version of a multi-level model is gonna be a random intercept model predicted or represented here. So here we have the dependent variable, which in this case is gonna be student achievement for student I in school J. Here we have the intercept. With a random intercept model, we're going to be estimating an intercept for each level two unit. In this case, it would be for each school. That's represented with beta of j, the subscript j, again indicating that it's a level two unit, in this case schools. Then we're going to assume that all the level one predictors are fixed. That is, that they're consistent across units, and so we're going to pool everyone at level one and use everyone's SES to predict the slope. And we also have an error variable, um, an error measure for level one. Since the intercept is gonna be different for each level two unit, it's gonna be measured in a separate yet simultaneously estimated equation, which is represented here. So the intercept for each level two unit, in this case schools, is gonna be measured in a separate yet simultaneous equation using your level two variable to predict the intercept. In this case, we're using school funding to predict the school-specific intercept, which goes into the equation used to predict student achievement. This can be estimated pretty easily in Stata using the xtmixed command. With xtmixed, you'd include your dependent variable, your level one independent variable, your level two independent variable, um, and these can be extended to include multiple independent variables at both level one and at level two. The double bars, then you would use your level two ID variable. In this case, it would be school number, school name, something of that sort. And then some uh, options, which just would um, use the MLE estimate command, 
standard for multi-level models, um, and then some instructions on the variance and covariance structures. Um, many of these are just the default. Now, one thing to note, however, is that when we're talking about the intercept, we may want to give this some more meaningful value. So let's talk a little bit about what the intercept means. So if we had no level two predictors, which you can certainly do that, it still fixes the within clustering, uh, within level two unit clustering, um, but still doesn't include a predictor. In this case, if we were to think about what the intercept means, it would be the student achievement for a student in school J when they have no SES. And there is unlikely to be many students in a school with no SES whatsoever. And so it may be more interesting for us to set this to um, the mean of a school or the mean of all schools. In this case, that would be grand mean centering or group mean centering. And we have a link connected uh, to this video that can give you more details on how to apply group mean and grand mean centering and how to determine which one's going to be more appropriate for your specific case. This model can be very useful when you've got multi-level data and you're interested in predicting both level one and level two characteristics on your outcomes. Um, however, it is important to keep in mind some of the caveats to using these data. Um, one would be that you do want to make sure you have enough variation at level two to justify using these more complicated models. Uh, you can do this by calculating the inner class cor correlation coefficient. It ranges from zero to one with um, it representing the percent of variation between groups. If it's not, a, or if there isn't a lot of variation between groups, then you can't justify using one of these models and you should use something much more simple. Um, and then another note is that because we are measuring a separate equation, or we're calculating a separate equation at level two, we need to be sure that um, the n, or the number of observations at level two, is sufficiently high to adequately estimate this equation as well. So if we only had you know, two or three schools, such as in the scatter plots, it wouldn't be enough to adequately estimate this equation. But with a sufficiently large n, these models present considerable advancements over OLS, especially when using multi-level data where there's considerable between-group variation.